Alright folks, welcome to Defend Reloaded. Sorry, it's actually uh, a new Let's Play from the Mysterious JG in what is typically, what is becoming typical for me, what's starting to become my uh, gimmick. Sorry, quick headset adjustment. I have uh, taken to asking you guys for input on whether I should do certain games, but I make my decision and start recording before you guys have had a chance to have any input. And uh, this is an LP that shouldn't take very long, but I did ask during my 1,000 subscribers special Q&A if anyone would be interested in seeing an Infocom text adventure from back in the Dizay. And um, so I figured I would just launch into one that I knew would be fairly quick and, and easy because I'm already familiar with the game. Um, I actually, when I first got DOSBox set up, um, back around the time when I was starting to record Panzer General, not actually the very first time I got boss, uh, DOSBox set up, but the most recent time when I actually went around to installing and setting everything up, I went ahead and actually played this game, because I was thinking about LPing it then, I didn't do it, but I played it offline and uh, got through it and worked out some of the kinks, so I think this should be fairly swift. Uh, hopefully it'll be enjoyable for you. Uh, it's going to be a text-based adventure game from Infocom. It's one of the ones I remember fondly from my childhood. Let's play Enchanter. And, oh, they moved this thing on me. I'm sorry, folks. I thought that was all going to be set up before we got rolling. It must be the Warlock Krill. The odd disappearances, the mysterious dissolution of regions sacred to the circle, the lessening of the powers, these could only be his handiwork. The circle gathers, and its leader, the esteemed Belbaz, reveals to them an ancient document which portends evil days much like our own. Krill's evil must be unmade, he begins, but to send a powerful enchanter is ill-omened. It would be ruinous to reveal over soon our full powers. A ripple of concern spreads over the face of each enchanter. Belbas pauses and collects his resolve. Have hope. This has been written by a hand far wiser than mine. He recites a short spell and you appear. Belbas approaches, transfixing you with his gaze, and hands you the document. The other enchanters await his decree. These words, written ages ago, can have only one meaning. You, a novice enchanter, with but a few simple spells in your book, must seek out Krill, explore the castle he has overthrown, and learn his secrets. Only then may his vast evil be lessened, or, with good fortune, destroyed. The circle rises and intones a richly woven spell, whose many textures imbue the small, darkened chamber with warmth and hope. There is a surge of power. You are sent. <laughs> with very little information uh, to help you, apparently. Enchanter, Infocom Interactive Fiction, a fantasy story. Copyright 1983, 1984, and 1986 by Infocom Incorporated. All rights reserved. This game is older than most of my subscribers, but it is one that I remember. I'm not going to tell you exactly how old when this, I was when this thing came out, but needless to say, it was not a brand new, hot off the presses game. Probably when I first played it, it must have been out for the better part of a year at least, or I wouldn't have been old enough to really be able to understand it at all. Although I was a smart little bugger. Anyway. Alright, so this is my first one of these LPs, so I'll explain this. Um, although you really should be able to figure out what's going on. Uh, it's all text, and you type in text commands. And uh, certain commands, certain verbs that will be used frequently are abbreviated. You can type in E and hit enter, and the program will take that to mean go east. NW enter means go northwest. Uh, that, those are the only ones where I ever use the short forms. Well, and, and inventory is I. Z, I think, is weight. Generally, though, um, I type out the commands more or less in full just to make sure that the computer knows what I want. And as we will discover before this is over, uh, getting the computer to understand what you're telling it is not always easy. It is not the rule of the day, but you will definitely find, if you play enough of these games, that you are going to come across puzzles where you know exactly what you need to do to solve them. And the problem is figuring out how the computer wants you to tell to input it. It's not quite as... Eh, Infocom always was a little better than Sierra about that, but it is an issue that's common to all the games from this period. Fork. 
when you stand at a point of decision on a road which makes a wide fork to the northeast and southeast, circling the base of the lonely mountain. The base of the lonely mountain. Do, 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 do. Sorry. Which looms. Ah, there's a future game from uh, Lucas Games. Which looms high overhead to the east. A very long and winding road starts here and stretches out of sight to the west through low, smoky hills. The sun is rising over the lands to the east. Uh, you only have a finite number of moves in this game. The Enchanter game uh, is one in which you need to eat and drink. I believe they got rid of that fairly soon in the sequel. Uh, in Sorcerer, the immediate sequel to Enchanter, I think there's a formula you can find in the amongst the first few locations which eliminates the need to eat and drink because it is running out of food. Uh, there is one food source in the entire game, and uh, you have to basically complete the game before you become hungry and need to eat enough times that um, you run out of that food. So, we type restart, and we get to restart from here, which means that unless we make a little bit of progress, I'm not going to bother to save. First thing that we can try to do, we have to decide if we want to go east or west. Let's try going west. Long road. You are walking along the road. It winds its way through low hills, sparse forests, and occasional subsistence farms. To the west, things seem lighter and more pleasant. To the east, they seem oppressive and dark. A worn sign sits beside the road here. The deserted village is to the east. Oh, I didn't realize there was a village to the east. It says that there was a lonely mountain to the east, and... Uh, Let's say there's a village to the east. That's the read sign. Why? Okay, let's keep going west. You are walking along the road. It winds its way through little hills, sparse forests, and occasional subsistence farms. A worn sign sits beside the road here, but it doesn't say the deserted village to the east. Otherwise, it's the exact same description. R. West. Exact same description. You going west. When the castle is east. Burma. Shave. <laughs> Sign is too raw, worn to read. Sign is too worn to read. And I'm just telling you now, folks, there is nothing to the west. I don't know if that's meant as a joke or what, but um, yeah, that road you go west. Uh, you continue going west until you basically starve to death. That may be why there was a uh, an infinite corridor in uh, Zork Grand Inquisitor. Zork Grand Inquisitor, by the way, I have recorded in full. Um, that was sent to Bobo on a um, computer disk that was sent by the mail. So that's been done for a while. I'll might I'll try not to make a lot of reference to it throughout this game, but uh, if I send Bobo this game as files over the internet, though so he'll he'll have the option, and I think I'll encourage him to actually upload them simultaneously. The biggest thing with the puzzle games, I'm finding I would like to think they'd get more hits and views than they did if I was coming out with them more often, but because they get generally done on a weekly basis, I think that makes it tough for some people to to follow. Because like after weeks gone by, they've probably forgotten that they watched episode one, and not really care anymore. But anyway. Um, you can't really go in any direction except west or east, and we know you can't go use, do anything useful to the east or west, so let's go east. You can't go that way. <laughs> Sorry. It's not west versus east. It's uh, northeast and southeast. So let's go northeast. Outside of shack. You are south of an old wooden shack. Funky little shack! Apparently deserted. The trail extends from northeast to southwest here, circling the lonely mountain which lies to the southeast. The sun is rising over the lands of the east. I'm south of an old wooden shack. Let's look at shack. 
He's like, hey, baby, why are you looking at me? Just look at the mountain. Look at the lonely mountain. The mountain is tall and proud, and its shining peak stands above the low high hanging clouds. Let's go north, which would take us into the shack. We are south of the shack, after all. Inside shack. The inside of the shack is a shambles. An overturned table and bench and a few broken windows remain. An oven is the only fixture that's even recognizable. The doors to the south. The top of a battered lantern is particularly partially visible behind the overturned table. An empty jug lies in a corner of the room against the overturned table. Let's get the jug. Taken. Let's look at the jug. The jug is empty. Let's get the lantern. Taken. Turn on lantern. The lamp seems to be broken, most likely beyond repair. The lamp is actually uh, worthless. As a kid, I always took it anyway. We will eventually find, spoiler alert, a spell which causes an object to give off light. You don't have to use it on the lantern, but I always used it on the lantern because it just made it simpler for me to keep track of the fact that that was what was providing light. Since there are points in the game, there's at least one point in the game, this is one of the big sticking things when I was a kid, where I got stuck, and the item that I needed is something you can only discover when you are walking without a light source. Interesting. Anyway, uh, look at oven. Nothing says love and like some from the oven. Strangely, the oven is still slightly warm, as if it had been used recently. The sun has now risen above the hills. Uh, get oven. It would take more magic than you've got. Open oven. Opening the oven reveals a loaf of bread. Get bread. Take in. Look at bread. There's an entire loaf left. All right, let's go south. And when you were on a road that was... Yeah, and as you'll see, if you return to a location you've already been, uh, you don't get the full description of it again. Although you can get it again by looking. Let's go northeast, because as you will recall, we were on a southwest-northeast road. Trail. The trail turns a corner here, bending out of sight to the southeast and southwest. The ground is higher here than to the south, allowing you to make out the top of the Lonely Mountain, shrouded in clouds. No path from here leads up the mountain, however. Southeast. Trailhead. You are on the northeast side of the Lonely Mountain, walking an arrow path through the rolling hills. On one side of the path is a sign, and behind that, to the northwest, a winding path through the thick undergrowth. The trail continues to the southeast. Well, let's go northeast. And speeding through these descriptions without paying attention was the first thing on my recent, and by recent I mean a couple of months ago, play of this game. Uh, this was one of the first things that I kind of missed and got all stuck, because I remembered the game from when I was a kid and vaguely remembered the, the map outline and forgot this location, the Shady Brook. The trail ends here. A ruined stone foundation marks the site of the old Lingolf house, which presumably was a monument of some sort. The trailhead is off to the southwest, and a small brook flows slowly by. Look at brook. The brook runs slowly through the thick vegetation. Fill jar. Fill jug. The jug is now full of water. Because the, when I played this game a couple months ago, I just kept dying of thirst. <laughs> because you've got to use... It's the only uh, fresh water source in the game. For anyone's too hard in the game, it's not a huge map in this game. So there really shouldn't be tons of different water sources. I think the only other places you can find water are a swamp where the water is like you know swampy and disgusting. And there's also some salt water. But I think this is the only place where you can actually find good drinkable water. Southwest, southeast. Eastern Fork. You are at a fork in the road where paths to the northwest and southwest girdle the base of the Lonely Mountain, and a smaller path winds its way to the east. So basically, um, we've gone in kind of a circular route north of this mountain. So, And as you'll recall at the beginning of the game, the trail split northeast and southeast. So let's go southwest and start making our way towards the things we would have seen had we gone the other path first. Village outskirts. You are on a road which enters a small village to the southwest and comes to a fork to the northeast. The Lonely Mountain looms above, but there is no path from here which ascends the mountain. 
southwest deserted village this is the castle's village formerly peasants lived here going to their farm plots each day merchants and, art merchants and artisans made it a center of cultural activity but now it's deserted or almost there is smoke rising from a particularly decrepit hovel to the south a path travels through the village from southwest to the northeast heading towards the castle and a less used trail heads north up the mountain well, let's look at the hovel You see nothing special about the hovel, except that it's particularly to crap at south. It is dark and smoky in here, but this is a place of great disorder, and its odor is indescribable. A pile of rags sits near a small pot, which is bubbling and steaming over a tiny fire. The pile of rags sports a gnarled hand, which busies itself with a noisome stew. A closer look reveals a withered crone at the other end of the hand. The creature looks you over keenly and speaks. I should have thought that they would send someone more. More. She laughs in an unsettling way. <laughs> Whatever. I can't do a loud laugh. I've got neighbors in this uh, facility here. They've all left. A great storm is brewing in the east, my friend, and all have fled before it. She starts to chuckle. Take this and be gone. With a wave of her hand, you find yourself reeling out of the door of the hovel, holding some sort of scroll in your hand. Look at scroll. The scroll reads Rezrov spell. Open, even, locked, or enchanted objects. Rezrov. Look at our inventory. A scribbled scroll, a loaf of bread, a battered lantern, a jug. The jug contains a quantity of water, and we have a spell book. Let's read the spell book. My spell book. The blorb spell. Safely protect a small object as though in a strong box. Like Al Gore wanted to do with the funds that were set aside for Social Security. Both the men a lock box. The Nitfall spell. Converse with the beasts in their own tongue. This allows you to speak Spanish. You can talk to you know dirty Mexicans who want to steal our jobs. <laughs> I'm kidding. The Fraught spell. Cause something to give off light. That's the spell that I always ended up using on the lantern. And the Nusto spell. I'll write a magical spell into a spell book. Uh, depending on when I get this over to Bobo and whether or not I demand that he start uploading them immediately, we may or may not in Zork Grand Inquisitor be far enough along that we've got a spell book. And I probably explained in those videos that it is an auto nustoing spell book in that game. Uh, a reference back to this game in which you use the Nusto spell to write spells into your spell book. And in that game, they had some spells that were Nusto proofed, so you can only use them once. That will be true in this game as well. There will be spells too powerful to use on multiple occasions. Uh, but basically, the reason that Zork Grand Inquisitor had an auto Nustoing spell book was A, they used the term auto Nusto. That's a nostalgia thing for people who remember this game. And B, the Nusto mechanic is extremely irritating because you have to go through the trouble of learning the Nusto spell and casting the Nusto spell every time you find a new scroll. In this game, you can't just cast spells. You have to spend a command turn, a move, as it were, learning the spell. And then you've got a certain number of turns before which you have to cast the spell, or else you have to learn it all over, because you'll forget it if you go too long without actually casting it. So let us... L well, first of all, let's just try Nusto Rezrov. And you will become... <laughs> if you play these games, you will be embarrassed at how naturally and easily, without pause, to reflect, you can type out a sentence like Nusto Rezrov. Oh, apparently, never mind, you do have to learn certain spells. Nusto, apparently, they do give you a break on, so, my bad. Your spellbook begins to glow softly. Slowly, ornately, the words of the Rezrov spell are inscribed, glowing even more brightly than the book itself. The book's brightness fades, but the spell remains. However, the scroll on which it was written vanishes as the last word is copied. Let's learn Nusto and see what it says. You already know that spell by heart. Okay, so I'm thinking of these four spells in your spell book you may already know by heart. Let's try to go back into the, uh, and thank her. And we've got the exact same description as before, but as you enter the crone's hovel, she booms at you. Are you here again? What a wizard! Her emphasis on the word wizard is filled with derision. Make a small effort, would you? To make your circle proud of you. The same horrible emphasis on proud fills you with revulsion. Go! You find yourself back in the village. Jeez, old man, I was trying to say thanks. North. Mountain trail. This spot halfway up the lonely mountain is desolate of vegetation. Short, stunted trees with branches empty surround you, and the air is heavy and smoke-filled. North again. Lonely mountain. 
This is the top of the Lonely Mountain. In olden days, marines, sorry, mariners had named it Signal Mountain, for its glistening peak reflected the pale moonlight, providing an unmistakable landmark on unclouded nights. Uh, because you actually are relatively close to the shore, as it turns out, so I'm not going to make fun of this. The bald face is made of a shining substance whose nature is unknown to you. Looking to the west. When you look to the west and the forest echoed laughter. Sorry. Looking to the west, low hills stretch to the horizon, and small pieces of the long road can be seen winding their way to distant lands. With signs that say Burma Shave. To the east, far away, can be seen a great castle at the edge of the sea. You've been out too long in the Midnight Sea, by the way. Three turrets it has. Two, old and still majestic, lie on either side of a third, cold, black as night, and squat as a toad. An evil smoke seems to emanate from this tower, shrouding the others in a darkening fog. A small mountain trail leaves the peak and descends to the south into a small village far below. Save. Duh. Okay. Jump off mountain you execute a perfect swan dive into the rocks below you have died <laughs> you awaken among the members of the circle oh i forgot about this bellboss the necromancer looks tired and scattered about are the remains of the components of a spell of great healing power the other members of the circle are pleased to see you revive but worried by the setback I think Krill is too powerful, says one. This inexperienced wizard will never defeat one, so puissant is he. Quiet discussion ensues, with well-concealed acrimony beneath the surface. Debate ensues, with Belbaz returning frequently to the contents of the ancient manuscript. His wishes prevail, and it is agreed to send you back. And uh, the problem with getting killed and being brought back by them is that you don't always have all of your inventory when you come back. Presumably, while you are dead, people go around and steal your shit. So let's head back south to the deserted village. Let's head northwest. Oh, northwest. You wander around in the village, find nothing of interest, and return to the path. Oops. Okay. Uh, da -da. How do we get out of here? I guess we're still on southwest. Loop. The trail makes a hairpin turn here, swinging out to the northwest and the northeast, where it enters a small village. Low, smoky hills stretch out to the west and south. Your mouth is getting rather dry. So we can go northwest. We get your dusty trail. The trail here turns dry and dusty to the northwest, a fork leading to the long road, and the trail continues to the southeast. Then we get back to the north, the fork. So we've basically done a circuit, a circle, circular circuit around the mountain. Uh, as you will recall, we popped into a little uh, hovel, hut, something, on the northern path, uh, where we picked up a couple of items and got ourselves some bread. Um, we also found a stream up there on the southern path. It was the village where a old sort of witchy type person gave us the Resrov scroll, which we do in fact need to get into the castle. So let's, uh, funky little shack. Let's drink water because we've been thirsty. The delicious spring water tasted great. Let's fill the jug while we're here. Let's spell fill correctly. And now we're at the Eastern Fork. Pardon me for a second. I thought I needed to sneeze, sorry. <clears throat> We're at the Eastern Fork. We've gone around the mountain in a circle. Let's go east towards the castle with its ominous three spires. You are on an east-west road which wends... wends? its way through the dark, rolling hills of this land. To the west rises a high mountain. To the east stands a high castle with dark towers. Let's look at the towers. The castle is far to the east and flanked by dark towers. From this distance, not much detail can be discerned. Outside the gate, you are outside the western entrance of the castle. To the east stands an iron gate which is closed and chained. A winding road starts here and proceeds to the west. Let's knock on the gate. Why knock on an iron gate? So someone will open it? I don't know the word so. Good for you. 
Uh, you can get sarcastic with the Infocon games. It doesn't really help you any. For example, you can type swear words. Usually it just tells you it doesn't know them. I think in some of them it will actually... It has certain swear words it recognizes, and it tells you, like, shame on you, or you kiss your mother with that mouth. But I don't think Enchanter is one of those. Um, Resrov Gate. You don't have the Resrov spell committed to memory. Freaking game. Learn Resrov. Using your best study habits, you learn the Resrov spell. You probably have, like, you know, a list of your favorite foods whose the first letter of each food spells out Resrov or some crap like that. I don't know. Resrov Gate. The chains of the Iron Gate fly into the air and vanish. The gate flies open, and a blast of cold air fills your lungs. Fly, fly, fly. As you pass through the gate, you feel that your mind is being probed. No, not the mind probe. After a moment, it is released, or perhaps discarded as uninteresting. <laughs> inside gate. You are just inside what appears to be the main entrance of the castle. An iron gate standing wide open looms to the west. Through it, a narrow road can be seen winding through low, smoky hills. Before you to the east is a huge open courtyard. To the north and south are archways leading to the interior of the castle. Seems like a good idea to save again. Uh, let's go into the courtyard. Courtyard. This is the westernmost point in a large open courtyard. The huge entrance gate to the castle looms ominously to the west. The courtyard widens as it proceeds to the east, where a large, ivy-covered temple stands. On either side of the temple are small towers. Far beyond the temple, high above, are two large towers make marking the corners of the castle. A squat, dark turret hunches between them, blackening the sky around it. A small path leads into the castle to the south. Let's go further into the courtyard. You are in the center of a large courtyard, which surrounds you in all directions. Directly in front of you, to the east, is a large temple flanked by two smaller towers. Uh... I'm trying to see if there's anything different here, so that I should even be reading it. Behind the temple can be seen two eastern towers of the castle, shrouded in fog, and the single dark turret. Black as night and sending dark streams of smoke into a lowering sky. From the temple comes a howling, haunting chant. Temple! Everything you see is gray and lifeless, as though covered with a veil of ash. Sound is muted, and there is a faint, acrid odor. This is the interior of, interior of a huge temple of primitive construction. A few flickering torches cast a sallow illumination over the altar, which, atop a, f f sorry, a row of stairs, is still drenched with the blood of human sacrifice. Yuck. Behind the altar is an enormous statue of a demon, which seems to reach towards you with dripping fangs and razor-sharp talons. Two open doorways lead out of the temple to the east and west, while two wooden doors stand to the north and south. A mass of hunched figures in the temple are chanting a haunting tune. They must be all, like, you know, humming uh, ghost town. Sorry. A low noise begins behind you, and you turn to see hundreds of hunched and hairy shapes. This is not good. A guttural chant issues from their throats. Near you stands a figure draped in a robe of deepest black, brandishing a vicious dagger. The chant grows louder as the road figure approaches the altar. As the shapes grab you, the figure in black speaks. Take the victim to the tower. I shall prepare for the sacrifice. The figures, whose form you can barely guess, take you from here through the northern door into a prison cell. They take your possessions from you and close the door with a crash. Cell. This is a small prison cell in the north tower of the temple. Hideous shapes can be seen through the iron barred windows in the prison door. From the temple, a blood-curdling chant can be heard. Inventory. You are empty-handed. Look through window. Hideous shapes chanting in unison can be seen through the cell window. Escape. What do you want to escape? The cell! That poses a difficult problem. There's only one way out. Hey, it actually understood me. That poses a difficult problem. There's only one way out, and that would be tackling a few hundred unpleasant creatures. 
A host of hunched and hairy shapes appear through the window. The cell door opens, and you are marched solemnly to the temple, and from there, up the stairs to the altar. The large, black figure approaches menacingly. He reaches into his cloak and pulls out a great, glowing dagger. He pulls you onto the altar, and with a murmur of approval from the throng, he plunges the blade into your heart. You have died. You awaken among the members of the circle. Belbaz, the necromancer, looks tired. Hey, he's a necromancer. I never really realized that before. You'll never expect defeat someone so poussant. Here's the problem. I, uh, I've been brought back to life. Now the bread and my jug of water are inexplicably been brought back to the Eastern Fork, but they kept my spellbook. I can't win the game like this. So, we were at the inside gate. We will eventually have to be able to get into that temple. Um, but at this point, I think we should put that off until we've figured out some more stuff. Let's try going... Uh, we've got a path going north-south. Let's go north. Pebbled path. You are on a long pebbled path stretching out to the north. To the south, the path continues through an open arch into an open area north. It is pitch black, and there is evil in the darkness. Time passes. Your stomach is starting to grumble. Okay. I was curious. This is not a game with Gruz. You do not get killed just for hanging around in the dark for a certain number of turns. So we can go up the pebbled path. Read our spell book. Frots causes something to give off light. Let's frots the lantern. There is an almost blinding flash of light as the battered lantern begins to glow. It slowly fades to a less painful level, but the battered lantern, battered lantern is now quite usable as a light source. Uh, and I was able to use uh, Frots without learning it first, because it was one of the spells that started out in my spellbook. Tower. This is the base of the northwest tower of the castle. A winding staircase leads up into the tower itself, and passages lead from here to the east and south. Up the tower. Jewel Room. This is a fabulous this fabulous room commands a magnificent view of the lonely mountain, which lies to the north and west. The room itself is filled with beautiful chests and cabinets which once contained precious jewels and other objects de art. These are empty. Winding stone stairs lead down to the base of the tower. There is an ornamented egg here, both beautiful and complex. It is carefully crafted and bears further examination. Get egg. Taken. Look at egg. This ornamented egg is both beautiful and complex. The egg itself is mother of pearl, but decorated with delicate gold traceries inlaid with jewels and other precious metals. On the surface are a lapis handle, an emerald knob, a silver slide, a golden crank, and a diamond-studded button carefully and unobtrusively embedded in the decorations. These various protuberances are likely to be connected with some machinery inside. The beautiful ornamented egg is closed. There are, in fact, two ways to open this egg three ways, really. Uh, I believe if you press the button, a uh, bad thing happens. The diamond-studded button moves to the open position after some resistance and a few odd noises from some machinery which resides inside the egg. Oh. That seems to be the problem. Razorov, Razorov. Egg, egg seems to come to life. Revealing a shredded scroll inside. That was the point. Yep. The egg seems to come to life, and each piece slides effortlessly in the correct pattern. The egg opens, revealing a shredded scroll inside, nestled among a profusion of shredders, knives, and other sharp instruments, cunningly connected to the knobs, buttons, etc., on the outside. That's the deal. If you start messing with the egg, I think you have to uh, I'm pretty sure that if you turn the handle, pull the handle, turn the knob, slide the slider, crank the crank, if you do that in the correct order, it will open. But if you do anything out of order, uh, the scroll that is inside the egg, which is the real reason we need to get the egg open, um, 
gets destroyed. So let's learn Resrov right off the bat. Oh no, Resrov and the egg still break. Uh, Hold on. Your lapis hand loses the opposition after some resistance for you. Uh, okay, I think no matter what you do with the egg, the scroll gets shredded. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure, and I, I can't remember this in detail, but I'm pretty sure you actually are meant to shred the scroll and you have to find something else to repair the scroll with later. So we get the shredded scroll, close the egg. As you close the egg, as you close the egg, all the pieces slide back into place, locking it shut. And the deal with closing the egg is that the egg is actually um, counts as a treasure because it's like this fabulous jeweled egg and eventually it will be useful when we encounter NPCs who might like treasure. In the meantime, I think we've done enough for one video um, because now I'm not even sure that we've. I, you know, I was saying that this will be quick and easy because I remember it, but I'm already like, oh crap, are we, are we supposed to hold off and do something before we get the egg and open it? I'm not sure. But we've got a shredded scroll, which I think. Uh, is correct that we are supposed to have the shredded scroll and we're supposed to fix it. But if it turns out that that was wrong, there is one other thing we can try actually before I end the video, which is just to break the egg. The egg is smashed into little tiny pieces by the force of your blow inside the now broken egg and the remains of a small spell scroll damaged beyond hope of learning. Get scroll inventory. Yeah, it's still considered the shredded scroll. So you can't sacrifice the jeweled egg treasure in order to get that scroll without having to go to the trouble of repairing it. All right, folks. So we've uh, wandered around a bit outside of the castle where an evil sorcerer named Krill is apparently hanging out. There's a dark turret with thick evil smoke emanating from it. There's apparently a temple in the middle of the courtyard where human sacrifice is practiced, so that's neat. Um, but yeah, things are, um, we're basically just some dude, we don't have any particular fighting ability. You've seen what our spells can do, it's mostly stuff like, make something give off light. We can com converse with the beasts in their own tongue, maybe, maybe if we used that before we went into the altar, something useful would happen, but I doubt it. They don't really seem like they're friendly kind of fellows. Um, I think our best bet is to stay away from that courtyard and wander around until we find a scroll that says, you know, the spell of win game, and when you cast it, you win the game, something like that. Either way, folks, I'm going to end the video. When we come back, we will continue to explore this castle, and uh, try to find a way to defeat the evil Krill and save the land. This has been Mysterious JG. Thank you for listening, more than watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.